Today on the table of the 870 Express. Now every website I went to called it something different from hardwood to tactical to police. So just use the part number if you're looking to purchase this particular firearm. The fit and finish on this firearm is very nice. I even did the thumbnail test on the wood. I'll roll in some pictures so you can see that better. And I did not go light. I was actually pushing hard enough to where it was bending my thumbnail. Uh, it's got this really cool R on the bottom of the stock. I like that a lot. On the trigger guard, it even says Remington. Now, this is a plastic trigger guard. The only blems I see on this, which are really hard to see, are right there from when they slid this on. Other than that, it all looks great. When you purchase the firearm, you'll get a really cheap cardboard box, your owner's manual, which is quite vague, but... It gives you all the important stuff. And a trigger lock. This does shoot three end shells. This is a fixed cylinder bore. There's no removable choke. Now the overall length of this firearm, I looked up the average size of your American male and it's 5'10". I'm 5'8". So I don't understand why they make the stock so long with this on here because it extends it back just a little bit. It does make it go over the receiver. I can hold off on a target pretty comfortably without fatiguing, but myself, if I were to purchase this, I'd probably take like an inch, maybe two inches out of the back stock here. You could probably not have to do any of that with just going with a skinnier recoil pad, because you're not going to get much comfort from this anyways. This is really stiff. It does not push in at all. But yeah, even just eliminating the length of this, would bring my hand about right here on comfortable standoff position. Your safety, right there. It is in a very nice position. When you come up, your finger's right there, you click it off, transition to your trigger. Uh, your action release, it's right here, and I think that's fine because if you're gonna open the action, like switch this out to a slug or something, you're gonna have to like do a flip roll to get the old round out and then pop in the new one and you're good to go. Now this is a steel construction receiver so you do pay for that in weight. This is right around the seven and a half pound mark, empty. But when you're sacrificing, you know, functionality for the coolness of the retro wood look, I mean, that's just something to be expected. The wood's pretty heavy as well. Yeah, you could go with a plastic version of this, but <laughs> you're losing awesomeness points like crazy. Now myself, if I were to purchase this, oh, I did check this. This is the actual size that you need for a bayonet. And you can buy replacement ones of these, which is a bayonet lug. Because I really don't see this reason of having a sling, a sling swivel stud on here anyway, since there's not one in the rear. So I just change this out, put on my bayonet lug. And then I'd look for an older pump, like a Model 31 pump or an old Ithaca pump to put on here. And I'd figure out how to do it and get it on because... Yeah, this isn't that bad, but it really reminds me of like a hunting pump, and this is more of like a tactical retro setup for me. Now your loading gate isn't an open concept like on your Mossbergs, so you got to be careful with this, not to let this pinch your thumb. If you go too far in with the round when you come out, it hurts, it'll catch your thumb. But once you get used to it, it's not that big of a deal. Now would I purchase this firearm? Yes, without a doubt. I think this thing is sweet. I love the fact that it's got a bead sight because they're insanely fast. I just wind up taking a little bit of length to pull off the stock and call her good. But thanks for watching. Leave in the comments below if you've owned this, how you've customized it, and what do you think about it. Don't forget to subscribe.